nicknamed the Black Death and the Widowmaker due to its ability to kill both animals and humans of all sizes. The Cape Buffalo is regarded as one of the most dangerous animals in Africa, killing an estimated 200 people every year. The Cape Buffalo is classified as a megafauna. These are animals that typically weigh more than 500 to 1,000 kilograms, 1,100 to 2,200 pounds, even though some include animals weighing only 50 kilograms, 110 pounds. The Cape Buffalo typically weighs between 425 to 870 kilograms, 937 to 1,918 pounds, and stands at a height of 1 to 1.7 meters, 3.3 to 5.6 feet. It has a head-to-tail length of 1.7 to 3.4 meters, 5.6 to 11.2 feet, certainly qualifying it for the status of megafauna. Its stature is bulky with short and stocky legs. Its appearance is characterized by its horns that taper curved outwards. The horns of Cape Buffaloes come together at its base called the boss on the temple of its skull. The horns are made from keratin and other proteins which make it especially strong and hard to break. It uses these horns to fend off other Cape Buffaloes during the mating season. On rare occasions, the Cape Buffalo can use its horns to impale attacking animals as a defense mechanism, often resulting in the fatality of the attacking animal. Found in most parts of the African continent, they often reside in savannas, swamps, floodplains and grasslands where they can graze freely and have an adequate supply of water, since they need water daily. However, they can also be found in forests and open woodlands, as long as there is a source of water and food in the area. If you enjoy our videos, consider subscribing and become part of the pack, or join the channel as a member and support the future creation of videos. Thank you. The male Cape Buffalo reaches sexual maturity at four to five years of age, while it takes six years for female Cape Buffaloes. Their mating season usually begins during the middle to the later parts of the rainy season. Female Cape Buffaloes have a gestation period of around 340 days, which is almost an entire year. Because of this, many calves are born at the onset of the rainy season, and the female calves are then ready for breeding by the end of the rainy season. Typically, Cape Buffaloes only give birth to one calf at a time, though a litter size of two calves is also possible. The mother Cape Buffalo and its calf will often nurse for a few weeks before joining the herd again. The weaning period of the calf lasts for around six months, though it usually maintains its close bond with its mother until a new calf is born. This means that for its first year, the calf will stick by and rely on its mother, especially since calves are often targeted by predators, such as lions and crocodiles, thanks to their smaller size and weaker build. But once a new calf is born, the older calf will start to give way to the new calf, and while no longer sticking right beside its mother, the older calf will still be around its mother until it reaches sexual maturity. When it comes to eating, the Cape Buffalo eats a ton of grass. Wherever there is plentiful grass, the Cape Buffalo thrives. To sustain its bulk, the Cape Buffalo needs to depend more on quantity than quality. Thanks to its wide muzzles and a row of incisor teeth, it can easily eat even the tallest and coarsest of grasses. To eat the grass, it uses its tongue expertly to grab bundles of grass in one motion before chomping it down with its well-designed set of teeth. This technique allows it to eat faster and more efficiently than other herbivores. On the chance that there is no grass to feed on, Cape buffaloes can settle on other vegetation found in woodlands, thickets, reeds and pastures. While the Cape buffalo is known for its size and bulk, it's not immune to being hunted by predators. Generally, the full-grown Cape buffaloes only need to worry about a pride of lions and a bask of crocodiles. However, newborn calves and sick adults are susceptible to being hunted by a bevy of predators. The list of predators for newborn calves and sick adults includes cheetahs, leopards, African wild dogs, and hyenas. These predators often hunt by group to have a bigger chance of successfully taking it down while the buffalo is weak. But there are instances where the predator becomes the prey. Because the Cape Buffalo wields massive horns, they can manage to successfully defend themselves using these horns to impale whatever predator is attacking. 
many instances have been recorded of lions being impaled by the horns and subsequently dying a few hours later. While not predators, Cape buffaloes can also get into fights with other species like rhinos and elephants over territory. Most fights are usually just both animals fronting up to each other, but some fights may be fatal for the buffalo. This is because while Cape buffaloes are big, they are outsized and overpowered by rhinos and elephants. They are also not immune to human interaction. Humans have hunted Cape buffaloes as game animals for as long as we know. The Cape buffalo, specifically its whole species of African buffaloes, is listed as one of Africa's big five game animals, as they fetch a fortune when hunted. Currently, hunters pay up to $10,000 for an opportunity to hunt a single buffalo, mostly for their trophy value, though some are hunted for their meat as well. Hunting individual animals will not harm the local population of the species immensely, and the money earned from allowing the hunt will help the anti-poaching patrols and villages nearby, as well as the communal areas management program for indigenous resources to local areas. However, with such a large number of interactions, the Cape Buffalo will inevitably defend themselves from what they deem as dangerous individuals. Whether the intent of the person is hostile or non-hostile, if the buffalo sees it as a threat, it will attack. Even wounded buffaloes are capable of injuring, and worse, killing those they deem are out to hunt them. In fact, African buffaloes kill 49.5 of the humans that attack them. This is how they've earned the nicknames the Black Death and the Widowmaker. Now, while this animal is dangerous, it doesn't mean it's immune to being a threatened species. The Cape Buffalo is categorized as a near-threatened animal on the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, conservation list. According to a 2014 census, there is a total of 513,000 individuals for three species of the African buffalo, including the Cape buffalo, with the other two species being the Sudan buffalo and the Nile buffalo. While listed as near-threatened, the IUCN believes that the population will remain unchanged if large and healthy populations of buffaloes continue to thrive in substantial numbers. Trophy hunting will actively help fund national parks and reserves to help with the conservation of the Cape buffalo and other subspecies of the African buffalo. One must note, however, that the Cape buffalo, along with other bovine animals, both the wild and domesticated ones, suffered from the huge 1890s African rinderpest epizootic. This epizootic is considered to be the most devastating epidemic to hit southern Africa in the late 19th century, killing over 5.2 million cattle, oxen, sheep, goats, buffalo, giraffes, and wildebeest. The numbers of Cape buffaloes were significantly low back then, and have considerably increased since the outbreak, but are still in near-threatened levels on the IUCN. The Cape buffalo rightly earns its title as the Black Death, thanks to its power and strength, making it a sought-after trophy animal for hunters. However, where they thrive best is not on somebody's wall, but in the grasslands of Africa, where they travel in herds, feeding on grass, naturally. For Cape buffalo populations to rise, we need to continue to support the organizations leading the way for the buffalo's betterment. If you enjoyed this video, consider diving into other wonders of nature with us. Check out our other videos and subscribe to our channel as we explore wildlife from around the globe.